Hello all, today ScorcherToys at AnyMoon.com is reviewing the future by Artstorm presentation of the Modat 5 from Robotech The Untold Story. For not at all obvious reasons, this toy is only sold under the Megazone 2 3 license where it was known as the Garland, which may be the least intimidating mecha name from the 80s. Originally announced for an April 2017 release, this collectible seemed to become vaporware before finally gracing shelves at the end of November 2019. If you're shopping for a Modat 5, Garland, or Elsa in her ice palace, head on over to Big Bad Toy Store via the campaign link in the comments below to find what you want and show your support for this channel. This toy comes in a box that can also double as your coffee table. Inside that massive brown chipper box is a massive blue box in a massive blue sleeve. Removing the sleeve reveals the box, which looks just like the sleeve. Opening the sarcophagus reveals a couple black paper flaps. Opening the flaps reveals an instruction novella over a styrofoam tomb. Removing the styrofoam lid offers the first glimpse of the toy artfully packaged in the way to consume the most possible space and still managing to look small in the vast sea of white. Inside this tray you'll find the body of the toy the arms, which will require assembly and don't have hands attached to them, a Shogo figure, optional Shogo hair with visor, a fixed posed leg section for Shogo, two display stands for the garland in maneuver craft mode, and four pairs of fixed posed hands. Flipping this massive tray over will cause all of your parts to go flying everywhere and out of their individual plastic baggies, but will reveal a display stand for maneuver slave mode consisting of a base and an arm with an adapter attached to one end. And this toy comes with a Shogo figure, and he's pretty small, a little more than nine centimeters tall, so he doesn't really scale right. He'd be like a four and a half foot tall Shogo riding the garland, but if you ignore that, He's a pretty good figure. His sculpt, his uh, paintwork might not be for everybody. It doesn't really capture a Mikamoto likeness in my book, but he doesn't look awful. He looks like a human, and that's what's really important. He looks kind of buff, actually. He's got a really pronounced Adam's apple, which is not something you see on a lot of toys. Uh, the neck wants to spin more freely than the head, so that Adam's apple can get sideways on you pretty easy. No big deal. You just reach in there and twist it back around. You do have uh, ball-jointed shoulders, and they're double ball-jointed, so you can get up high, get the arm out, twist it all the way around, elbow up and down, pretty much just as you would expect. Ball-jointed hands, so they let you do everything you need to do, including grasp the handles on the bike pretty well. Then you have uh, ball jointed hips, which allow him to ride the bike. You'll be seeing that later. Knee and ball jointed feet. So all this stuff, pretty good stuff. You can get him in lots of different poses. He balances pretty well. You do have the option to remove his hair and you just fish a fingernail in there and pry forward and there's hair comes off. And then you get this piece as an optional look for him if you like him with the visor on instead. Now here is the Yamato 115 scale Shogo, which honestly was also a little bit small, so you could tell this Shogo very small. It was fixed in a riding position, not a lot of uh, articulation to speak of, so a big improvement over that. The Arcadia version is completely fixed. Pretty decent looking. Again, everybody makes Shogo too small for the garland, and that's just something we have to accept at this point. If you want to put Shogo in maneuver slave mode of the garland, you remove his waist, basically. You remove his legs entirely, and that's why there is no twist point or pivot at the waist, because this comes right out, and then you grab these legs, and they're fixed posed flat bottomed so he fits in that garland a little bit better but he still looks good so there he is that's the shogo figure you can fit him inside the cockpit and he's pretty decent looking the toy comes with four pairs of fixed posed hands two are small fists i've got them on the garland right now then you have sort of this natural loose grip this open hand and this holding the gun hand Clearly what is lacking is an articulated hand, 
which is a bummer that I can't really reconcile how expensive and big this toy is with the fact it doesn't come with articulated hands. So that's definitely a letdown. You get a gun. The gun, like other Garland toys, has that extension at the front of it. It's got some nice detail. It's got a nice wash to it. It has this opened sensor area, but there's no paint on the sensor and there's no little dab of black paint in the barrel, which it's probably, it is a laser gun. So I don't know, maybe that's actually a lens and there's not supposed to be a barrel like you'd have on a traditional gun. But you know, either way, it looks a little awkward to me just to be that same blue right at the front, blue gray, whatever it is. So to install the hand on the gun is also a little tricky. You need to start at the bottom here and just fish in a thumb and then work your way up towards this section here. And then you can wrap the fingers around. And there you go. That's your hand on the gun. It'll do a decent enough job holding that gun and yet still letting it wiggle a little bit so you can get just that right pose. Here we have the toy in maneuver slave mode with the arms attached. If you need help installing your arms, check out my transformation guide. I go over arm installation as well as Shogo installation in the cockpit there. If you have an Arcadia Garland, it stands 19 centimeters tall, weighs a little more than 320 grams. It's pretty hefty given its size, but this future Garland at 25 centimeters tall is also 588 grams. It's an absolute beast to handle. If you've got the Yamato 115 scale Garland, it's a little less than 24 centimeters tall and a little bit more than 375 grams of heft. So easily a much bigger, well, just a little bit bigger, easily a much heavier Garland from future here. You really feel that metal content to be sure. Now you might be looking at this toy and thinking, yeah, it's big because it's got some weird elongated torso that isn't really line art accurate. Now, the Yamato toy here looks pretty much like it jumped right out of the show. The future toy looks sort of like a realistic interpretation of a garland, maybe using today's aesthetics. But if this is bothering you, like you have the sloped forward cod piece here, you have the angled back one here, you have this big mechanical torso section that doesn't even exist over here. If that to you just is not something you can deal with, you can bring the torso down on this toy and rotate at the hips to get a look that is much more similar to the anime. So there you go. That looks a lot more similar to the anime. Now, yeah, it's definitely sloped down more than we see on the Yamato toy here, but it does look close enough. And if strict line art accuracy is your thing, clearly this future is never gonna deliver on that. But if you're flexible on the aesthetic, this is a really good looking toy. Here you can see I've got the Shogo figure in that cockpit. And as I said before, my instruction guide for transformation also covers installation and putting Shogo inside there. Now, when he's actually in there, let's close things up here. He is less visible, but there is still this big screen here that covers up the Shogo. And he, it is transparent, so you can see him in there, which is pretty cool. It's not the easiest to get in and open and close and pull them out and put them back in again, but it's not terrible either. Now, one thing that is a bit of a letdown here is the head articulation. So the head itself is beautiful, lots of nice detail there, but it only turns this far in either direction. It looks up all right. It can kind of look down. It just hits that screen right in front of it, but you're not going to be able to twist it nearly as much as you want to. But is it fun to handle? That's the question. And we've seen that the head articulation is limited, which is a bummer. Another bummer is really the lack of ratcheting joints. This is a very heavy toy with very heavy limbs and a very heavy upper body. So the fact that the joints aren't ratcheted means you are very likely to end up with loose joints after some handling. So we do have a couple ratcheted joints, the shoulders, the pivot point that brings that shoulder up is ratcheted and then we can move this prong here and then move the arm away 
and that is a ratcheted joint there. So that's your ratcheted joints. Everything else I'm gonna show you is friction based, which is a little scary because you know after handling this a bit, they're gonna be loose joints. So we can spin the shoulder all the way around 360 if we wanted to. There is a twist point at the elbow. The elbow itself allows better than 90 degrees of motion. You've seen that the hand is on a ball joint, but what you haven't seen is that the hand also at the wrist can pivot. So the actual base that the ball joint is connected to moves back and forth. So you get a little bit more action out of the hands, which helps with that fairly awkward gun. Then we have the ability to twist at the waist, which is cool. And that twist is on the pivot joint. So if we have the toy up like this, it's more of a lateral twist. Down like this, it's more of a dipping down to pick something up off the ground. Either way, it's gonna give you some fun options as you handle the toy. Moving down, we have the hips, which are ball joints, so you can come in and out. And again, not ratcheted, so this is scary for the future. You can come way up, you can come way back, uh, and that's about it. There's no twist down below here, uh, like there is on the Yamato toy. We get to the knee, there's no twist at the knee. You have uh, not even 90 degrees of motion at the knee. So a little bit shy there, you can come forward a little bit, but that's as far back as it goes. And you hear that is a nice ratcheted joint. Moving down to the foot, you have this little flap here that always gets pushed in, but you have the ability to rock back and forth. Again, no twist, but you can come up and come down and the heel is individually articulated. Uh, so that's all good. There's more up than there is down there, isn't there? So you have enough to get you by at the foot. A twist would have been a nice feature and this flap going in, it can be a little bit annoying. But otherwise, this toy will be a lot of fun. You are gonna get into some really exciting poses. But the fact that these joints are gonna get loose on you is pretty scary and is gonna make using that stand all the more recommended. So let's check out that stand. Here is the included display stand. You've had your toy out, you've been having some fun with it, but you're afraid someone's gonna bump your display case and send the whole thing spilling over. You grab this display stand. It's got a little twist point here that lets you lock that rod into position at the height you desire. And it's got an adapter on the back that has a very stiff ratchet to it that really holds the toy in place. In fact, you could do full on jumping poses if your toy is stiff enough to allow that. So what you wanna do is bring this piece up and it pegs right into that hole right there. And we just put that in, push forward. Now that is the problem with that is it's on a spot that uh, is hinged for transformation, but it should hold on just fine once you get it in place. And now you can have the toy, again, this is strong enough where you can actually get the toy full airborne and it will hang on there. So that's kind of cool. It allows some jumping poses. What you're more likely to do, more sensibly, is to get the toy on ground level and now you can pose the legs however you want without fear that the weight is gonna cause the toy to fall backwards. Now, I've been able to get some really sweet, fun poses with my toy. I haven't had too many problems with loose joints, but you can see already, there's a lot of heft there. That joint wants to spin with gravity. So these are things that you will have to figure out. You can expect a lot of weight with these joints. They are gonna get loose over time, unfortunately. There's no ratcheting in the joints, which is a bit of a design oversight, but can be overcome with some floor polish. Here we are in maneuver craft mode. And speaking of floor polish, which if you don't know, you can certain types of floor polish you could put into friction joints and it makes them a little tighter. This is what maneuver craft mode looks like. It's not terribly bad, but it's not very effective either. It's got a droopy point. I hate droopy points. And the reason it has this droopy point is because it's got a really heavy front wheel. And then the cowl and the arms, the arms connect to the cowl. They're only connected to the body via one pivot. There should be a second connection down towards the bottom somewhere. And then that would keep that thing rock solid, but they didn't do that. And so you get this floppy mess. And 
The connection to the cowl from the arm is just a peg that goes into a hook. And if they really wanted to do that, they should have made that hook a coil over shock so it looked like suspension. So then you wouldn't even be that offended by this whole floppy mess. But they didn't go that road. And then you could see on the bottom, the crotch piece is basically dragging on the ground. There's just a tiny bit of clearance. So they got the, uh, the feet nice and elevated, which is one of the first garlands to really give you some ability to bank. But they ended up doing putting the crotch basically on the ground to do it, which is not great in my opinion. And the other thing you uh, would expect at this price point and with all the other features this thing has for there to be an integrated kickstand, but we didn't get that either. So uh, lots not to like right off the bat. Now you do get a spinning rear wheel, which is good. You do get a spinning front wheel also, which is two separate sides though, and they're very stiff. And if you're a photographer, uh, you do want to watch out because they spin independently. And then this track, uh, this tread detail will get out of balance or out of whack, not be symmet symmetrical for you anymore. So that's potentially annoying. So overall, not a bad looking maneuver craft but it doesn't function at the high level you would expect at this price point. When you're ready to put Shogo on the bike, you're gonna grab him, you're gonna take his legs way out to the side, you're gonna bend them down, which is gonna make him look a little funny, and then you're gonna point his feet forward so he looks a little less funny, and then get his arms out and his hands, like they're gonna grab those handlebars. And now the toy has foot rests. Uh, you don't ever need to use them. They're down here. So you can move the, the rest to touch the bottom of his foot wherever you put it. It's a nice little detail, but it's gratuitous, really. So just get him on there, grab the handlebars, and he will be holding them. And again, he's going to look tiny because he is undersized to fit in maneuver slave mode. But that's what he looks like, kind of like... A man trying to mate with a centaur, I suppose, but a child riding his father's motorcycle, maybe. Whatever it is, that's what he looks like. One thing that also frustrates me, they went with vertical pegs to attach the cowl to the arms, and so they just kind of work their way out gradually. Not very sufficient. There's also some pegs throughout here that if you press down, this whole snake-like structure sort of falls apart on you. So um, again, not the sturdiest toy when in maneuver craft mode. And if you wanna get them to stop leaning, you do have a couple options. The first is display stand A, which looks like this. And you can see that's how low that crotch gets. They had to put a little indent in it, even though this thing basically sits on the ground. And you're going to grab your toy and you're going to put this right at those little hip, uh, right where the hips are. And you can just put it back down. And now the toy will stay nice and straight. And in reality, you're probably just going to always use that and it'll keep the toy from falling over to one side. I wish, since it is pretty necessary to use at least some sort of a display stand, that they had gone with a much smaller base that was less evident that you were using it. But still, it serves its function and it's pretty simple and it stays on there solid enough. You do have another option though, and it's a pretty cool one, although I think the display stand they chose to give us to use this other option is a little silly. So what we can do is unpeg our legs from the back. It would be cooler if they had given us the ability to do this with the legs pegged in, but that's another issue. So once you've unpegged your legs, you can twist them upward like so to get sort of a different look. Then we have this huge funky display stand which can slide in on this silver hook in the back. And let's get that on there. Once that's in position, you can put the toy back down on the ground and bring your legs down and they will go into this elevated position and you can see the wheel is uh, it's actually sitting on top of that display stand right now so it's just totally bizarre once you've got the legs in the elevated position 
you could bring the feet down to that position there and you've got sort of a proto garland look going on and since this toy doesn't look like your typical garland it's a nice feature kind of uh, somewhere in between the two so that's a it's a cool option i just think it's uh, poorly executed both from the toys perspective and that display stands so inevitably people see my reviews and say oh but which one should i buy and obviously that comes down to what your preferences are if you like line art looks then yamato or arcadia are your options the future and the yamato both 25 centimeters long the arcadia toy 124 scale and something like 18 centimeters long so much smaller toy Yamato mostly plastic it has some problems staying together in craft mode also relied a little too heavily on magnet magnets the first release also tons of durability issues they got a little better on that but it gets loose joints it needs the floor polish treatment it doesn't have nearly as much articulation as the other toys but these days you can find it at bargain basement prices so still a relevant option for you guys who are more lion art purists maybe don't have a ton of money to spend but want a big garland on your shelf if you got a little bit more money these are the two that you're going to be considering and again line art accuracy over here rock solid maneuver craft mode tons of articulation this is a very fun toy also the big downside here is you can't fit shogo in the cockpit this is not an articulated shogo figure at all um, there is also going to be issues where you might need some floor polish in the friction joints here it's a very heavy toy for its size that puts a lot of strain on the joints so it might also get loose so that can be a problem for you otherwise you do have this future it's a beautiful take on a garland definitely a new interpretation but that does not rub me wrong at all the color a deep dark red the detail work the mechanics all throughout very very clean very attractive if you're like look i'm not going to be driving this thing around on my shelf it's a display piece i don't care if it wobbles a little bit in the front then that's great you don't have to care about that you might love this toy if you don't mind doing a little floor polish treatment when the joints get loose all the better this thing very attractive i really like it I just am a little frustrated that at this price point it falls short on a few design elements that I think really should have just been considered absolute musts. But otherwise, a very good option for your uh, die-hard Megazone folks. If you got the money and you're just looking for the best possible toy out there, there are better toys than this at this price point, to be certain. Check out my full review on anymoon.com. Subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.